and we're back for a paint correction video on a 2000 and I forget Audi S6. Um, I think it was like six or eight years old and the customer contacted us just because he wanted to get the paint levels back to an appropriate level as he can enjoy it more. As this is primarily a weekend type vehicle um, for the customer. And I know I'm gonna have a bunch of haters on this video about why I didn't go for 80, 90% perfection on the paint. I posted a video a while back, make sure you watch it, that explains why you need to make sure you're delivering the appropriate service for the appropriate amount of money that you're being paid for. Um, so this one we had an understanding that we weren't trying to go for perfection, we just wanted again to make it look a lot better. So we did a two step on the hood, roof, and rear deck lid, and just a one step um, on the vertical panels. I did a two step in a few areas on the vertical panels where it really needed it, um, but for the most part it was a two step on the flat surfaces and a one step on the flat surfaces. I didn't, do, I didn't do that good of a job documenting the work. If you're interested in the tools and products that we use, those will all be linked down in the description box down below. If you wanna offer your own detailing services, check this guide as well in the link description down below. It's the nine services that you can offer in your detailing business. So check all that in the description box down below and we'll get into the video. And we're gonna start off the detail with inspecting and cleaning the wheels first as we wash the vehicle as working simultaneously. So these wheels were pretty bad. They weren't consistent with the condition, but for the most part, they were pretty caked on as the owner of the vehicle never cleaned the inside of the wheels. Overall condition of the paint also wasn't this ba that bad as this is more of a weakened uh, car for him. All right, so as I start to clean the wheels and tires and the right rear was the worst to clean, it put up the, the, the hardest fight, so it took me the longest on the right rear wheel. Um, as I'm doing that, Anthony is washing the vehicle and gonna be claying it as well as I just touch up the entire four wheels. Now his technique does need a bit more work, that's on my part, we haven't really practiced all that much, but one key thing we do with the prepping part is go as fast as we can because we need to spend most of our time on the actual polishing and detailing part, not spend that much time on the prepping phase. So here, and clean the wheels and tires, washing the vehicle, and clean the vehicle, it's probably under 45-ish minutes. Next, let's move on to a more uh, closer look and cleaning the wheels. I use two spray bottles to get to just to saturate the area quicker. And this is me using the easy brushes. You could tell these came out actually pretty easy as compared to the right rear wheel. And remember that a lot of brake does will sling back with these types of brushes. And look how much gunk is just coming off will break us from the wheel, from the agitation. And I just started using uh, a brush that I've literally been having for years now in my garage and that's this brush right here. I just now started using it and I'm a big fan of it. And here I'm using the magic eraser just to get a bit more aggressive cleaning on certain areas that still had brake dust buildup. Next, we're gonna pull in the vehicle, and this is some of the well, this is the equipment I brought for the polishing. I have the G15 and the GG6 from Grid's Garage, uh, microfiber tiles from I don't remember where I got all those and then an assortment of pads, tape, a pad cleaner, flashlights, and a bunch of compounds and polishes. Primarily, I'll be using the Boss system from Griots, which is their line that they go, that's paired up with the pad system and the machine system from Griots Garage. So what you're seeing here is just a test spot on the hood. 
um, I did a two step which is a compound and a polish on the right side and just a polish on the left side if I'm not mistaken the hood roof and rear deck lid was heavily oxidized with water spots so the flat horizontal surfaces we're gonna take a two step and the vertical surfaces which are the door panels are gonna take a one step And this is a condition of the vertical panels, which is again, the door panel, the anything that's not the roof, rear deck lid or the hood. And it's funny on this scene because I actually didn't record the first part. So this part, I was actually just doing this for the camera as I already polished it enough. I just wanted to catch it on camera so I can show you guys and then wipe it down. So once we've done a test panel on the hood and on one of the door panels, we'll go ahead and start masking the entire vehicle so we can make sure that we're not putting any compound or polish into the cracks or crevices and just to protect any of the more sensitive areas that aren't just paint. And this is the vehicle all taped up with 3M masking tape. I got it from Home Depot. It's all protected, roof, door panels, hood. Now we can just polish with no worries of burning or getting residue into anything. So this is just a general inspection of the vehicle just to, guys, to give you an idea of what it was. Now, you actually, I don't know if you could tell, but there's actually quite a bit of oxidation, not oxidation, but there was just this layer of just, of gunk that was hiding from the, that was hiding the, the shine from the paint. So we weren't going for perfection at all, but we did re remove that layer that was really uh, hiding the shine. So it's not really caught that well in camera but in person it was a huge difference in terms of not scratch and, and you know swirl removal although we did do that but it was more of getting that layer of oxidation or just filth off the vehicle so for starters we're gonna go with a compound and I think I want to say I used Oberk on this one um, which I'll do a review on later but here I'm just gonna keep on again compounding the hood roof and rear deck and because there are some pretty heavy water stains on here and just generally speaking for the compounding phase you will use slow hand movement with depending on the paints low medium medium to um medium to hard down pressure on it now these were pretty ideal conditions in terms of it was cold i think it was like 40 degrees outside um and for the most part in the morning so you know putting too much pressure to generate heat wasn't that much of a problem if we were outside or if this if the vehicle was in the sun for four hours before we got there and then we pulled it in it i wouldn't be able to go as hard on the paint because i'd be generating too much heat I'm gonna take a microfiber towel and wipe it down to inspect the results.
Now, since this is the compounding phase, there should be some haze. You can't, you're not gonna be able to tell on the camera, I don't think, but uh, there is gonna be some haze to the paint, which will have to be refined by the next phase, which is polishing. But here, I'm gonna take the pad brush cleaner, turn on the grids and just brush it down, then wipe it down with a towel and continue to compound. And here are just some before and afters throughout the process. It didn't do that great of a job capturing the entire process, but here's the hood on the oxidized portion and then moving it over to the compounded side of the hood. And then this is a one step on the side of the door panel. Again, not going for perfection at all. If you're wondering why not, I have a great video that you should look um, on my channel on why you should not always offer perfection in your paint correction services. And then this is on the bottom of the, the doors. Keep in mind on this shot that I'm doing it for the camera. So typically speaking, I wouldn't be standing to the side of the vehicle. I just wanted to get you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So it was a bit uncomfortable, but at least you guys get to see how it moves. And if you can tell already, there's a huge difference between the polished and the not polished side. Again, there's gonna be plenty of imperfections still left, but it still is a significant difference overall from gloss in the paint. No, yeah. Uh, nah. I don't know what you're doing. And this is just one more closer look. And these were the end results. I didn't do that great of a job capturing more of the process and I had more footage of me publishing, but it was pretty boring so I didn't add it. Unfortunately, the sun was down before we were done, so we get I couldn't pull it out to inspect or to get more after footage in the sun. All right, and that wraps up this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Documentation process wasn't all that great. I know I'll get better as I keep on moving along. Again, for those links, check the description box down below. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, trolls want to say something, leave those in the comment section down below and I'll see you on the next video.